Good afternoon. My name is Gen Paparista. I'm with the National Instruments with the AWR Group. And today I'll, I'll talk about uh, a framework that we've developed for transceiver and uh, module and phased array uh, design for 5G um, communication systems. So, um, there, there, is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of talk about 5G these days, and the main uh, driver of the, the wireless communication standards has been the 3GPP uh, community. And it started in 1998 and uh, was responsible for uh, developing GSM, U, uh, UMTS, and LTE. And uh, as we've seen, uh, every about 10 years, there is a, a platform shift so we went from GSM to UMTS to, to LTE, and uh, what we've seen from uh, 91 all the way to uh, 2015, which has been the LTE advanced, and the next one is expected to be the, the 5G standard, it, it expected to, to be deployed around 2020. And uh, in between all these 10 year cycles, we've seen these uh, refinements like uh, two and a half G, three and a half G, and maybe they're four and a half G, like the LTE advanced. Um, so the, the next big thing will be the, the 5G. And uh, what, uh, what would be the, the, what are the goals of the, of the 5G? Uh, the, the biggest thing is network capacity. So there, there is talk about uh, increasing the capacity by a, about a thousand, by a factor of a thousand. Uh, the next thing is uh, the number of devices that will be uh, supported in this new system. It will be about expected to be about a hundred billion, which is a really large number. Uh, they would provide really high throughputs, uh, about 10 gigabit per second or so. Very important is the latency. The, you know, the, the new 5G system is supposed to support a lot of real-time communications, and what that really means is very low latency. And uh, the, with this, uh, will come a whole new class of uh, a class of service requirements. Uh, you know, new devices that will uh, will move the radio link from station stationary to highly mobile. Uh, the throughput, as I said, will move from kilobit per second to gigabit per second, and, and delay should go down to uh, to really milliseconds. Um, an initial deployment, as I mentioned, should be around 2020. The uh, uh, the 5G is, uh, you know, as of now, it's uh, the, the agreement is that it's not going to be a full, a full new redesign of, of a new signal, but it will be, uh, you know, improvement of the, the the current standards, and and there will be additional technologies that are added to to the current uh, implementation. So. Uh, some of the vectors, uh, the different vectors uh, uh, that will improve the, uh, the new standard will be uh, increased spectrum, uh, will be more cells and, and smaller cells, the high directivity antennas, which is uh, MIMO uh, and beam forming, and also, uh, also power efficiency. And uh, uh, each of the, the, the first three is expected to, to uh, provide uh, an improvement of, of a factor of 10. In, in, uh, in capacity, and by combining them, that's how we were expecting to achieve a, a factor of a thousand in, in increased capacity for the for the 5G. And uh, power efficiency is, is really important because battery life has, has really become a necessity. In a, a better back battery life has become a necessity in, in any mobile device these days. So uh, our uh, our framework was really. Uh, in, uh, uh, focused on the, on the third topic on the high directivity antennas or MIMOs for, for, uh, and, and beam forming applications. So uh, there is talk about something called massive MIMO. And uh, what, what is massive MIMO? It's, it's really uh, the MIMO systems that have a very large number of antennas in the, in the, in the phase arrays. So they are uh, they are going to be very helpful to inc to achieve an, uh, a really big increase in capacity. They will do this by being able to pinpoint the signal to specific users and, and actually steer the signals, so they could fo uh, they could focus on on specific users and track them, so that they they uh, they would be able to reduce 
the uh, uh, the interference between uh, between users. Uh, uh, but this will require a very large number of uh, elements in the in, uh, and also phased array implementations. Uh, uh, with this, actually, one benefit would be that the user equipment will be simplified since they won't have to deal with uh, with signals intended for everybody in a cell, but the, the signals will be pinpointed to uh, to specific users. So. In our tool, the, you know, when we look at these phased arrays and the MIMO system, some of the design goals now are unique for, for the 5G systems. We have to deal with, with very large phased arrays, and when you have a, a large phased array, uh, now ease of configuration becomes a, a necessity. You want to have low overhead in terms of simulations because you, you, know, you can have hundreds or, or, or you know, several hundreds of elements in your phased array. Uh, you want to be able to define element patterns and radiation patterns for for your elements, and uh, which means that now you need to be able to tie into your EM simulations and, and measurements. Uh, you would be uh, the the goal would be to really calculate the the phased array response, uh, and and uh, you should be able to include the design, manufacturing, and and RF impairments of your phased array. Uh, you you want to be able to design and, and uh, evaluate your gain and phase tapers. Um, furthermore, you, you want to be able to, uh, to implement your beamforming algorithms and you want to be able to, to refine them for different, uh, different scenarios and, and uh, add uh, steering capabilities to your phased array. And, uh, and most of all, you, you, you really, you know, in the ADA, EDA industry, you, you really deal with RF, so impairment of your RF links need to be included in, the, in this design so that in the end of the day, the performance will be realistic and you'd be able to deliver on your, on your products. Uh, so, we in, in, uh, at AWR Group, we, we uh, we have the Visual System Simulator, or VSS, which is uh, a, a real powerful uh, system level simulator uh, that includes two different engines. It's a time domain engine that uh, allows you to perform end-to-end -to -end simulations and, and measure BER, EVM, ACPR. You'd be able to drive the, you know, the, your designs with modulated signals, with, uh, with the real 5G signals. Then we also have these frequency domain capabilities where we, where, uh, where we perform, uh, perform very accurate budget analysis uh, which, uh, which are much more powerful than the traditional spreadsheets. They would include uh, uh, effects like impedance mismatch, uh, temperature dependency, and, and so on. Uh, and we also have a tool that does spur analysis where you can really identify the, the heritage of spurs in your uh, at different points in your design so that you could you could go in and uh, tweak your design to meet the requirements uh, and what's important is that that all these uh, capabilities exist in the same environment and you, you you put together a sister diagram only once and you can pin you can point to uh, any measurement to the system diagram and you do not have to import or export your your design so that you can run your time domain versus frequency domain measurements. Uh, another uh, real cool feature of VSS is that it ties seamlessly to the microwave office, our circuit simulator, and there is no need to import or, or export designs. Uh, everything lives in the same project and you'd be able to seamlessly co-simulate with, uh, with your circuit designs. And this would allow you to uh, optimize uh, your circuit designs, for example, using system level uh, uh, metrics. And uh, furthermore, we co-simulate with, with other tools like MATLAB, Simulink, uh, LabVIEW, C++, and, and we also provide fixed point uh, simulation capabilities if you decide to go and, and move further, closer to hardware. And, and ultimately, you could even perform hardware in loop simulations as, uh, as, as your ultimate prototyping, uh, 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 prototyping uh, effort or verification. So in terms of transceiver, transceiver design and analysis, what, you know, what kind of analysis can we perform? Uh, the, the most, uh, some of the common ones are uh, the 
transmitter performance metrics. In this case, we look at transmitter efficiency, power gain, output power, and so on. Uh, when we move into the receiver design, the, the important figures of merit are, are gain, uh, noise figure, uh, to, uh, third, order, in, third order, order intercept, dynamic range, and so on. Uh, the RF link architecture and, uh, and, uh, and, and design can really be, uh, be customized and, and modified based on the on this measurement. So we, what we'd be able is that we, we could perform trade-offs so that uh, we would uh, place elements in our design such that we can optimize our, our gain or noise figure or third or order intercept or other measurements. And we can really optimize each individual uh, module so that the, the overall link uh, performance meets our requirements. The uh, VSS uh, phased array is, uh, is a relatively new capability uh, that has been improving over the last year and a half or so. And it is really capable of simulating very large phased arrays. And we have customers that actually uh, simulate thousands of uh, element, uh, arrays with thousands of elements. They, they can use standard or custom uh, array architectures. They, uh, and they can, uh, can have uh, their own uh, gain tapers or they can use probably they can select from the standard gain tapers that we provide. Um, we provide several signal distribution schemes for the transmit uh, arrays and uh, most importantly we allow you to, to model the array imperfections. As I mentioned these could be RF imperfections, these could be manufacturing imperfections and so on. Uh, you can have now the ability to define radiation pattern for, for your uh, elements in the array and uh, uh, you can measure the, the array performances you know, uh, across uh, a band, different bands of frequencies and you'd get the, the appropriate frequency dependent response. So here's uh, a, a list of, of everything that we, we are able to, or uh, the, the main uh, components that we are able to, to change in a in a uh, phased array configuration, and and uh, we, you know, uh, it, this slide actually shows you some of the standard array geometry configuration we have, like the the lattice configuration where we can have rectangular or triangular arrays, and uh, or concentric circle arrays. But we also allow you to to come up with custom configurations, so such as uh, 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 these these arrays that are built out of standard uh, uh, blocks uh, or, or, or standard uh, uh, manufactured arrays or the what they call the pseudo-random uh, phased arrays like the, the image in the bottom right. Uh, so going back to you know we can include these phased arrays in a in a system uh, design and we can drive them with uh, modulated signals they can be radar signals they can be 5G signals in this example and uh, so uh, we can have a, a mixture of our uh, new uh, modulation waveforms in 5G and the, the phased array, and we can uh, evaluate the, ra the array performance of a, of a, a range uh, of power levels and, and frequencies. We can uh, perform various budget analysis measurements, such as the cascade uh, noise figure or P1 dB gain over temperature, etc. cetera. Uh, the <coughs> Uh, one of the very important features we provide is the sensitivity to imperfections, to, uh, to hardware implementations or to the uh, RF link, uh, to the RF link imp implementations. And we can do this via our, our uh, yield analysis um, uh, functionality in, in the AWR software. And, and finally, we would be able to perform a, a real end-to-end uh, simulation by including the the effects of the of the MIMO antennas, in and we could we would be able to actually uh, calculate bit error rates and and look at the capacity improvements by including the the effects of, of everything in a in a system design, including the RF links. So uh, and here's a, a, a simple test bench that shows how we are measuring a uh, the response of a phased array where we have defined here. Uh, the we have, we have defined the, the element pattern on, on the, it's the green bulb that came from our EM simulations of the of the element of the array, 
and we include this into this phased array that has, in this case, it's only 75 elements, but uh, we apply the certain gain tapers. It's a Dolph Chebyshev in this case. So the overall performance of the array, uh, it will include the, the uh, element pattern and, and the, the gain tapers and, and everything else. Uh, so overall, you know, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what I wanted to convey in this short presentation is that uh, at AWR, we, we have a test bench, uh, a test bed, a, a framework that is, uh, can be used for designing your uh, multiple antenna, uh, multiple element uh, antennas. And uh, you, can, you can evaluate very large phased arrays for, for MIMO applications. Uh, the, the design cycle is going to be uh, uh, reduced because we've, we've tried to make it really easy to use, but still you do not fall short of representing all the hardware impairments, including uh, RF impairments in your, uh, of your RF links, and, and you can use the, the full 5G signals that, we, that uh, we, we can provide. So it seems like I'm right on time. If there are any questions, I would uh, encourage you to, to visit us at the booth, and I'll be there for the next three days. Thank you.